Hey guys, I'm Katie. And I'm Alexis, and this is the Check Your Aesthetic podcast. Hey. You're doing <laughs> Oh, sorry. I realize I do this. I like- Oh, with your ring? My ring. Yeah. But then it looks like I'm like, like freaking out. Yeah. So, well, yeah. if you aren't watching YouTube, Alexis was just uh, doing some work with her hands. Hand. But yeah. um, so the good news about this episode is that it was absolutely jam packed and Abby was so fun to talk to that we don't really have to bore you guys with much about our lives, but mm-hmm. I do have some updates. Um, I have a huge update, but continue. You know about it. Oh my God. Yeah, I know about <laughs> it. Um, like, <laughs> my not so exciting update is I just got back from Nashville. I went to Nashville, as you guys know, to see Casey Musgraves. Yes. The episode looked I like talked... a literal queen. I Thank so you. I got a lot of comments about my outfit, um, mm-hmm. which I told you guys about my outfit, but the episodes got like weirdly switched. So I was supposed to be telling you about it before I went to Nashville, but then the episodes got oh, switched. Yeah, and I was they telling haven't you... seen the photo yet. They're like, they don't know a thing. Like they don't, but y'all they don't... might, they might know by now. Well, they know by now. Absolutely. But the episode, like before I yes, went to Nashville, yes, it hadn't come yes, anyway. Yes. But I went to go see Casey Musgraves and then had a little weekend in Nashville and it was so fun. It was for my birthday technically, but also just, it was happening anyway. And like, Mm -hmm. like my birthday's this week. So, Mm -hmm. um, anyway, it was very fun. Casey was super fun. We had very high up seats and, um, I had, I was scared. I was going to like throw up through my fear of heights. Yes. But yeah, if you guys are wondering which outfit I'm talking about, go to my TikTok and look at the euphoria TikTok <laughs> we created in a manic state in our hotel room. And then you'll see that's the best view of my outfit. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Alexis, oh, why don't me. you go ahead yep. and uh-huh. I'm a person. Share um, the news. So, uh, um, it's kind of a lot. Um, so, uh, Austin and I, decided that we are not gonna have a wedding well we are but it's gonna be three days instead of one um we have decided that we are going to elope sort of um we are going to be going to city hall with just our parents um and doing like a really short private ceremony and then we'll be like doing like a dinner with them whatever and then like two days later we will be flying to Zurich I literally have a tattoo of the coordinates, like by far my favorite place in the world. Very meaningful for me and my family. That's um, in Germany. If, I mean, Switzerland, if you guys don't know, because I didn't. Huh? Isn't oh, yeah. So, so, yeah. 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 I didn't. So, I literally, so, me, whenever you were talking about Zurich the first time, like, like, I was like, <laughs> where, where is Zurich? Is Zurich? <laughs> um, yeah. Zurich, Switzerland. Um, my grandma was born and raised in, in Zurich. Um, so, yeah, it's really important to me. She was like, what? favorite person um but I have hired a photographer to be taking um photos of Austin and I in Zurich and that is where we're going to be exchanging our personal vows um and then we'll be staying in Switzerland for a little bit longer and then traveling to the north of Italy um and going around there we'll take like a long-ish uh honeymoon and then we will be coming back And about a week and a half later, we are going to be going to Maine, where Katie will be flying to. Just Um, me. Just Katie. Me, Austin. Just Austin and me and Katie. Um, (laughs) No, Uh, it'll be just our bridal party um, and their significant others. So Katie's coming alone. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. um... (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) not that the day after valentine's day for real uh sorry that was mean um, i also, also i would like to say something in the middle of your profession of love you know your whole wedding thing i'm actually super happy because actually yesterday was the first valentine's day that i was not like really lonely like i was totally fine being single. like i thought it was going to be bad so i was like i need to stay off social media so i don't get really sad whatever she was texting me in the morning of valentine's day and was like yeah, i was like social warning, media is triggered. A no. I was like, social media is a no, but then I didn't stay off social media. And I was like, I just don't care. Like I'm, 
I'm okay, fine. I that. So I, that was, that was good. Anyway. Katie's like, I don't care about your wedding. It's like not important. <laughs> but no, that's not um, what I said. Anyway. No, I know. I'm kidding. Um, also Katie very much deserves to say that from the amount I have talked to her about it. She very much deserves to say, shut up. I no, don't care. I love hearing about it. Um, but yeah, so it'll be for like a Thursday to a Sunday. We're going to have all of our closest friends, um, all staying together in one house. It's going to be so fun. Having a like sort of casual, um, reception there. Um, like I'm going to cater a dinner and everything. So it's kind of like our wedding, but very micro. It's going to be so fun. I can't wait. And you guys know I'm going to be vlogging. Also. Yes, Katie will be very much. I'm gonna be the vlogging. Content. Katie will be the social media manager for the wedding. We were joking um, about like the photographer that Alexis hires for like all of her photos of her and like her bridal party, and uh, us being like, "Hold on, guys, hold on. Um, <laughs> let's pull our podcast mics like, out, guys. Just like give us like, like one second. We'll just like give us. We one gotta second. get some content right now. Oh. Um, <laughs> Katie and I are like everyone else was doing things. We're like going off like cultivating like a photo shoot that's just like the two of us it's like a CYA like, photo shoot we're like y'all just hold tight like we gotta go to party city we gotta get some balloons <laughs> oh no we gotta go <laughs> we're like hold on she's where I get like a cake this is CYA we're like we show up ba- in, back in, the, in matching outfits everyone's like Austin's like oh my god Austin's like what actually Austin would be like sounds about right surprised yeah (laughs) for real I just can't Um, wait for everybody to like sorry I interrupted you again for everybody to hear us like like see us like cackling they're like what are y'all laughing about we're like nothing (laughs) you wouldn't get it every day like you wouldn't get it like me just like in the background being like "Ah, ah." it's like I don't really like I know I know I know a decent amount of your friends but of course I don't know none of them I've like met them Mm -hmm. So mm-hmm. I'm just, can't wait. No, I'm actually really. Well, you'll come to you'll come to the bachelorette party, so you'll meet. Yeah, I'm gonna make a bunch of new best friends. Yeah, but also update. I don't know if I updated you guys that the wedding was uh, like was gonna be in 2023, and then it got pushed. Um, but now it is gonna be a year from now. So yeah, I couldn't keep up. I thought it was always gonna be then. So if you guys couldn't keep up either, I don't blame you. Yeah, I'm sorry. I. Mm, Indecisive. I think what it is. We actually haven't, like we mentioned Abby's name, but we haven't talked about what this episode oh, is shit, about. Oh shit, yeah. So. <laughs> it's really good, so please stay around. Yeah, so actually I'm just going to intro her and then we're just going to get into it. But today we chatted with Abby Price. She is the owner of Abode. Um, you might know them as Shop Abode. Those are their handle, or that's her handle on socials. Um, it's A-B-B-O-D-E. Um, me spelling the whole thing. I'm like, follow her now for real, but, um, it's a home decor, a vintage home decor shop. Um, and we just talked about all kinds of things from customer experience to committing to a brick and mortar, um, in New York city to like social media marketing. So it was a really, really great conversation. She was super fun to talk to and just super sweet and cool girl. So Alexis, unless you have anything else to say, I think we should just get into the conversation with Abby. I think that the only thing I have to say is that you should listen. Wow. <laughs> that was hard hitting. A showbiz okay. baby. All right. Well, mm-hmm. enjoy the episode, Let's guys. Let's we it. love y'all so much. Enjoy. Hi, Abby. Thank you so much for coming onto the podcast. Hi. I'm so excited to be here. We were saying before, this one has been one that's gotten rescheduled a number of times. So we're, <laughs> yes. we're all very excited to be sitting here. Me and Alexis have had uh, just the craziest couple of months. Um, Seriously. But we're so excited to be here. I have been a fan of, y- I found you and your shop on TikTok. And I just love following along. All my favorite Thank influencers you. go hang out. It's just great. Everybody loves. Aw, thanks. So for anybody listening who does not know who you are, um, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, tell everybody your story, talk about a bird, tell everybody all that good stuff. Yeah. So my name's Abby Price. Um, I have a home decor boutique in New York City, specifically in Nolita on Elizabeth Street called Abode. 
And I, the name is also kind of like a play on my name. That's where that, cause it's spelled A-B-B-O-D-E. So mm. when I named it, I was looking for like synonyms to the word home and saw the word like a boat. And then I was like, oh, it's such a pretty symmetrical word. So I added the extra B in for Abby. I love it. Um, yeah. So I started um, making like little dry floral arrangements out of my apartment in like, February, about January, February, 2020, right before COVID after um, I learned all about it from like one of my previous jobs. And then I was in grad school and just like wanted to do something on the side. And I'd always wanted to make one of these little dry floral arrangements for myself that I would always see at work, but I was always too busy. Mm-hmm. So I made a few and thought it was just super cute and posted in some Facebook groups. And I was like, oh, maybe some people will also be interested in these. Mm -hmm. and a bunch of people reached out I just like made an Instagram and started selling them through that and then COVID came and I kind of moved home and wasn't really doing too too much with it and then sort of like revamped it a little bit over Mm -hmm. that first summer when like the vintage home decor trend on Instagram blew up because I was already finding like vintage vases for Mm -hmm. my arrangements and I was like okay well I'm already seeing vintage vases and other cool vintage things that I like so I sort of was just doing all of that and then I was finishing up grad school I went to the Pars- to Parsons at the new school um, and was getting my master's in fashion studies. And I was finishing up and I had to figure out what I wanted to do like for a full-time job. And I was like finishing with a master's degree in fashion, but was into this whole home decor space. Mm-hmm. And so I was just like, okay, what am I going to do now? Because you need a lot. I'm like, I'm not going to go back to school again and do interior design. And I saw some other young women opening up stores in the city. And I just thought to myself, I had some, some successful pop-ups. Like if they can have a store, why can't I have a store? Literally that's, I thought right. of that in like March mm-hmm. and then figured everything out for the store in April and opened everything in May. And the first wow. Saturday we opened was I graduated from Parsons on like that Friday and I opened on Saturday. I mean, it was all virtual. So that's why I was right. able to have so much time to do it all. But right. yeah, and then here we are in November, 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 I opened the new store. And then here we are now, like two months later in February. Wow, that is such an amazing story. I didn't realize that you went to Parsons. That's so like impressive. How do you think that, um, because you said fashion. So how do you think that like the fashion kind of component of that degree has translated um, or like helped you with transitioning into like more of a home or a business kind of sense? I think that that's like my, all my background was in fashion. I always wanted to be in fashion. And I think that home is sort of just like an extension of fashion but like Mm -hmm. fashion Mm -hmm. for your home you know instead of for your body and excuse me um and I felt like I learned so much about these trends and I was also able to kind of alter the second year of my master's program to be a little bit more focused on these new interests like I took a design class that was like the history of Um, different like design styles and furniture so like this huge mid-century modern trend that really emerged I was Mm -hmm. taking class as that was happening learning the history and learning about all those different styles which was really great and then I wrote my thesis on the interiors of Ralph Lauren stores so I kind of Mm -hmm. just like was able to cater my program to be like this mix between fashion and home and I just think like the creativity and the trends and the styles that go along with fashion translate really well to home. And it's like, if you kind of like have that eye, I feel like it's Mm -hmm. not hard to kind of be able to go between the two. Totally. Yeah, I agree. I think we talk a lot about like having the eye on the podcast. um, And I think that's definitely so important. Um, And I do think, I feel like a lot of people probably look at you and are like, oh, do you regret like getting your master's, you know, when you just went on to do something different, but I think it's so important to realize that, especially I feel like in a master's program, you really can like cater things more than you think, um, to like what interests arise for you. 
um at least yeah, definitely that's definitely the same experience and it I've just had. gave me the time like I yeah the reason why I even started the program was because I was like oh my god I'm so miserable in all these jobs I've been getting yeah. like I was like mm-hmm. do I hate working or do I just hate what I'm doing <laughs> right I hate my job. Job. yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> and right. I was like what else can I do besides this because this is just not what I was meant to be doing and so yeah. I found this program and just it really just gave me the kind of time and flexibility to take a step back and just be able to work on some of my interests and some of my passions. Like I transitioned from full-time to part-time at my job that I was at when I started school. So it was like, that was an interesting balance to go from like very, very demanding schedule to being required to do all the same amount of work, but just getting paid half the amount, having half the amount of time to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, But I just think it really just, if I hadn't gone to school, I never would have not stopped working at that job and I never would have started my own thing or had the like kind of because it was basically I was finishing up school I had this idea I'm never going to quit a full-time job with benefits to try out signing a three-month lease on a store (laughs) space you know what I mean like it literally never would have happened so I was it was just like all the perfect timing for me which I was really fortunate and with COVID I was really able to kind of take the jump in a way that I never would have been able to do before with like the prices of rent and things like that in New York. Yeah. I love that. So when you were like, when you said you had done pop-ups and everything, were you, when did you really transition to what you're the, the kind of items that you're selling now? What was that point? Cause I know you did dried flowers, but when were you doing pop-ups that were similar to what a boat is selling now? Um, I would say in December of uh, 2020 is when that happened because I was, yeah, most doing the dry floral. And then I met these two women who have an awesome boutique in Hoboken. And I just literally, I met them at the flower market right before COVID happened. I just like overheard them talking and I just was like, like they were talking about dry floral and I was just like, oh, hey, like I just was listening to you talk. Like you can and just give them some like tips and tricks. And I just, mm-hmm. we just kept talking and they're like, oh, we're opening a store, blah, blah, blah. And then they were supposed to, their opening weekend was the week of lockdown. So they had to postpone all their wow, whole yikes. thing. Yes. Yeah. So that's like mental just, breakdown, st- like status. Literally. <laughs> literally yeah. Like, uh-uh. Crazy. <laughs> and so they had to postpone there, but we just st- kept in touch touch and then I was just kind of wanting to do a little bit more with the um, business and I just it was just mostly just like recognizing this trend of vintage home decor and Mm -hmm. I just knew that I could do that as well and like I was already finding the vintage phases so it was just Mm -hmm. like why would I not also just find anything vintage so they we had an idea to do a pop-up at their store around the holidays because it's all clothing and it's a definitely a higher price point and the things I was bringing to the store were a bit less expensive compared so mm-hmm. um I kind of got to set up on two different like shelving areas and I went shopping and I found tons of cool vintage things and I got to feature those in the store and then I came in like two weekends while my items were there and did um, just like a little pop-up and set up a table and like sold dry floral to customers. I would fill the vases that they had there mm-hmm. um, and things like that. So I did that in December. And then on Valentine's Day, which is literally a year ago, this yesterday, I did a pop-up at a store on Bleecker Street in West Village and sold like 20 arrangements in a day, which was crazy because it ended up doing a lot better than at the other pop-up, which was very mm-hmm. interesting to see. Mm-hmm. Um, that one was just a dry floral, but like that was just because kind of like the dealings with their business of what made the most sense for me to do. But up yeah. until then, I had been like sourcing and selling and doing all of that. Okay, Right. So I want to hear about the process of, you kind of talked about deciding to open up a brick and mortar but what was kind of like the process of like you knew you were ready to do that finding the space transitioning from doing pop-ups slash that like selling through Instagram to a brick and mortar um so yeah just kind of what all of all that process was like so I had like 3,000 followers on Instagram I think that December was my best month because I was just really doing it for fun like I was not doing any like crazy like nothing like it really was just for fun Mm -hmm. and so I think like that holiday season I I maybe sold like a thousand dollars like on my website which was like crazy because I had 
barely, right. you know, like anything. Before. Yeah. Like, yeah. and then my business bank account had like $3,000 in it. And I was like, oh my God, like this is Rich. amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And right. I never <laughs> took any money out of that like, bank account. I sort of just like made it work with like my other, you know, like I just kind of kept everything there. Cause I just like, my family is very entrepreneurial. And I just was mm-hmm. like, I never knew what was going to happen from it, but I yeah. knew that I didn't need to take that money out. So I was just kind of saving it for like a rainy day and who knew what was going to happen. And I wanted to keep doing the business as it was on Instagram. Cause it's like so popular now. And like, I had, I'm like in with my like very small website. Um, mm-hmm. And then when I was graduating and needed to get a full-time job, I kind of talked to my family and I was like, Oh, like, what if I like try this out for a couple months and like, would you maybe be able to like help me a little bit? And they were just like, no, like <laughs> you can get a job on the side and then do this, or you can get a job and do this on the side. And then like, once it becomes big enough, then you can like quit your job and pursue this for pursue this full time. And I was like, okay, well, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I just was like, I just had kind of seen how the pop-ups went and they went like pretty well just from foot traffic. And I just was like, people were like, oh, you should wait till you have so many online sales that like, it makes sense. And I just like had this gut feeling that was like, I should just open this. Like, why not? Like, there's no stores that are like this. Like there's stores in Brooklyn, but I'm not going to Brooklyn every weekend. And I love this kind of place. Like this vintage is it's here to stay. Like, this is not a trend. I don't think that's at least for the next couple of years, you know, people are loving shopping this way and there's really Mm -hmm. no home decor store similar to mine there's like coming soon but it's like much more expensive and Mm -hmm. definitely like a different vibe a lot less vintage um and I just was like kind of just did some rough math came up with a business plan um of everything and realized how much money I would need to start it and just was like you know what the worst case scenario is I like lose the money I put down on my security deposit you know what I mean it was just like I really didn't know like I really didn't know I had no proof like I just had seen myself like at a pop-up and like I just even my friends who have the store broken bell were like you're so good at this like we would hire you to do the store with us but it was just like too hard for me to commute to like Hoboken and stuff and just like didn't really make sense but like, I'm just so good at talking to people, so good with customers. Like, mm-hmm. I love talking to people and doing that. And I just really felt that it would make the most sense and it was needed. And I just was like, you know, this is my only shot. Like I said previously, how I was finishing up school, I didn't really have a next move yet. And so I was like, this is just, let me just try and see how it goes. And that, and here yeah. it, it worked. <laughs> yeah. I, I love the top, like the topic of like a gut feeling. I mean, obviously there's no like, numbers behind a gut feeling Mm -hmm. um but actually it's funny that you brought that up because I think it was yesterday that one of my business professors I'm in graduate school right now at um the Savannah College of Art and Design um but my my parents are in Savannah in the winter really really I love Savannah I'm not in Savannah but they have such an amazing programs there I always would say I like had known about Savannah before I I went to Ohio State and if I had known and I didn't want that college experience of like the football like yeah. I love I ride horses and they have that I was like I could have been like a barn equine science major <laughs> in like fashion design that would have been like yeah they do program. have it's very weird that Scott yeah. has like an equestrian major um yeah. but anyways like so random but also Savannah is so beautiful I really wish like it didn't work out that I would have gone there, but that's where I wanted to originally go for undergrad. But anyway, other topic. Um, but my professor was talking about how um, like gut feelings really are important to listen to in um, business. And like, he was talking more in the sense of like pivoting um, and like knowing when it's time to make a change. But I think that you bring up another great topic that, you know, other people, Yes, obviously it's good to look at numbers, but at some point, sometimes, like depending on the situation, of course, I'm not saying like go put down a deposit on like a place you physically can't afford. Um, <laughs> but it is important to listen to those like gut feelings. And so not everyone is always going to be like, yes, this is the best idea. I totally get it. And I'm so fully on board. Like sometimes you just have to like listen to yourself and mm-hmm. kind of not really 
listen to everyone else but also it's a good idea to sometimes listen to other people so yeah I'm not trying yeah. to get like it's a balance blamed. for sure yeah definitely yeah. and um, I I I'm interrupting but, um I also <laughs> love what you said I feel like we just have to reiterate this what you said about not spending any of your money that you made because you yeah. didn't need to like that is such good advice for anybody who wants to start a side hustle that wants to or I, I don't like the word side hustle but you know a business, business on the side yeah. um who may have a full-time job or something and can't really decide you know when am I going to take that jump start saving all that money live off of your salary and then wait till you have enough. I just, I think that was very smart. Yeah. Like, and then the time came where I was like going to start this and I was like, oh my God, now I have like five, $6,000 saved. Yeah, that like down, is yeah. a big chunk of like starting yeah. this like thing that I it was just like, I had no idea this was going to happen, but then I had this chunk of money that I never would have had else otherwise. Yeah. I right. think that was just obviously a very good move for your future self, but Alexis, I'm sorry. I fully interrupted you. Go on. No, it's okay. No, it's okay. <laughs> um, I was just going to ask about, I mean, especially New York City, it's so, um, I feel like space and, you know, like physical like stores um, are, I think, hard to come by. I might be completely wrong. I live in Vermont. Um, but how, what was the process of like finding that space, choosing that that was like the right space and the right timing and everything? Like, what was the process of that? So I, um, so there were for a while, there was a lot of vacancies with COVID and oh, yeah. mm -hmm. one of the first times ever that you could negotiate like this when it came to rentals mm -hmm. and uh, commercial leases are very, very intense. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so my, so I did like a, someone recommended this like short-term leasing company. Mm -hmm. So they kind of helped me find my first space, but like Honestly, I just was walking around and calling phone numbers that said for lease on empty storefronts, mm -hmm. you know, like it was really, that was the, honestly the process. And then mm -hmm. they connect me with this rental, um, short-term rental companies. They kind of helped facilitate my first lease. That was a, a couple months long, but like before you, you like COVID, you don't, you sign five-year leases or 10-year leases, or you pay like or like a company like the short-term rental one who like owns spaces and like almost like sublet rentals them mm -hmm. out to people for short term. Um, so I was able to sign a three month lease, which is literally unheard of. That's awesome. And I was thinking that, when you said that earlier, I was like, what in the world? <laughs> yeah, no, it's like yeah. insane. So I signed a three month lease for the first store and then that came and went and I extended that and they raised about like a couple hundred dollars and that was July, I think I resigned July to October and then um, October, so, or then it was like September sort of coming around and I started speaking to the building about staying there for maybe like a year. It was a very, very tiny space. So it was about, it was technically 500 square feet, but it was split into two rooms. So the front room of the store was about 200 square feet so all I could fit was like a cash register stand and like two bookshelves and the whole and that was wow. all I had to sell on so it was very very small mm -hmm. um and I was basically like I just it definitely felt like there was so much more that I could do and I could fill in the space and so mm -hmm. then when I talked to them about staying longer and resigning they wanted me to pay like two thousand dollars more a month or some crazy amount more months to stay there because the market was starting to come back and I was just like, this is like absurd. Like I'm not paying that much to stay there. Um, and so I started looking around at other spaces and I did the same thing. I just walked all around Nolita and started calling phone numbers that I saw on vacant uh, rentals <laughs> and um, got connected with um, a realtor through that. And then he found the current space that I was in. And, and the current space I'm in is like about... 700 square feet so technically it's like not so much bigger but because I only had like 200 square feet it's basically like three times the size mm -hmm. right. of where I am now which was amazing right. and it has a huge outdoor patio in the back I have like a full basement to store things so that's awesome it was crazy but I had to sign a five-year lease because Whoa. the market is fully bounced back for the mm -hmm. most part, in terms of commercial leases, mm -hmm. um, not to the exact same prices, but it's definitely getting back there. And so I got, I was at the perfect time where I still had a bit of leverage, right. but it was like, I mean, if I had signed that five-year lease in 
June or July, it would have been much better, but like, it was still pretty good. Cause even now I saw my realtor the other day in the neighborhood showing more places. And she was like, yeah, there's like two storefronts left and they're all going for like a few thousand dollars more a month than what I pay. Right. And so the new space ended up being almost similar to what they had wanted if I had stayed in the yeah. old space, which was a third of the size. So I signed, yeah, I decided a five-year lease, which is really crazy. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's really crazy, but they have this thing in New York called the good guy guarantee. So that they only give to small businesses. Like if you're like Starbucks or McDonald's or something, you don't get this. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Where if I give them like about six months notice, I um, can end terminate the lease, Hmm, but I lose my security deposit, which is like four months of rent. Oh yeah. Okay. So it's only worth it if it's like okay, year yeah, two of depending. the lease. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like a commercial lease is nothing like a residential lease. Like right, I had no like idea. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like I had to get lawyers involved. Like it was. Wow. I mean, obviously lawyer. Like that's not that crazy. Right. But it's like right. I had no idea. It's like scary. I got quoted by one. Yeah. Like one attorney that they told me to reach out to quoted me ten thousand dollars just to do just to look over my lease to do I'm this. Sorry. Me yeah. sending my lease to, leases to my dad. No, literally, I had <laughs> to call, really? call one of my friends. I had to call one of my friends to be like, hey, we haven't spoken in like months, but like I was wondering if you could like take a look at my lease like, for my store. That is so Because <laughs> I was crazy. like not about to pay that. So right. it took like two months of like negotiations and back and forth mm-hmm. and with the lawyers and the realtors and then their lawyers. And I had to do like a whole pitch on like the business and the ways to generate income, and, like why it makes sense for me to be there. And like, and then I, and I found out like four leases before mine had fell through on the space. And that made me scared. And, and then basically for a commercial lease, it's like, you know how like in a, if you're in your apartment if like something breaks like you just call your super and they fix it mm-hmm. that doesn't exist for commercial so basically you it. own it and mm-hmm. then pay you, every single your, month it's your, yeah like, so if anything happens right. or goes wrong I'm responsible yeah it's my responsibility to fix it unless it's like on the outside or like structural so mm-hmm. they just they're so expensive and all yeah. the responsibilities on you and it's like the craziest process ever Mm-hmm. but yeah it's either five years or 10 years so I thought five years would be the yeah, better much, option a little me. bit better yeah. <laughs> yeah a lot of people do rec- they just they recommend you just do a 10 year because like do you get savings for that no but it's oh. like they're just like the, I know you just like, don't have to deal with that again if you're going to keep yeah. the store open yeah and like yeah. the way with the market is like my rent right. could probably be well. like double in, te- in five years yeah, you know because yeah. they like renegotiate or whatever yeah but yeah. like I don't know so a lot of them will say like just do the tenure because like the good guy guarantee is the same you know so it's like if mm-hmm. you're going to break your lease after three years versus seven years it's still going to be the same default pricing so right but I just was like nah <laughs> nah <laughs> y'all let's do five safer, I feel yeah. like for people around our age 10 years is like I mean it's not half of our life but it's like close to half of our yeah, life. yeah like right. I'll be, so, I'll be so 30 much when the lease is up and like I feel like I'll be in such a different place like who knows yeah. if I'm even going to want to have yeah. a brick and mortar store anymore so yeah exactly so I'm so impressed with like uh, you dealing with that like I feel like uh, it's just like a very scary thing to do um mm-hmm. but I'm wondering if you said in the beginning um of the interview that your parents have kind of like an entrepreneurial mind or sense or that's something that you were raised with do you think that that's something that influenced this like business-minded sense yeah. that you have and kind of helped that not be so scary maybe yeah, I mean, almost every single person in my family started their own business. Like, it's mm-hmm. crazy. Like, cousins, my aunts, uncles, my dad, like, almost every single person, um, grandparents, like, mm-hmm. it's really interesting. So I think that that just made it feel pretty, like, attainable to yeah. me, that, like, it's not such a crazy dream, that, like, there's mm-hmm. if I have a good idea and I set my mind to it, that it's something that I can get done, um, which, so I think I'm really lucky in that sense because it was always something that I, it was always something I've wanted to do. Like, this is one of like a million ideas. This is the first one that just yeah. stuck and it's like a real business now. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> so I think that hugely, hugely influenced me. And I think it also made them more supportive because they've all been mm-hmm. there. Like they've they all been at that it, point. Right. That's like, this might fail, but like, at least you can try, try because of all the positives that can come out of it if you don't fail. 
yeah and if you do fail it's like not like your life's gonna end which yeah I feel like I'm so young that it's like then I'll just get a job you know exactly exactly and then you have a whole experience of literally doing everything that involves running a business so of course you'd be good at helping somebody else run their business (laughs) Um, (laughs) which I feel like is always good but okay so you've bought the space you've signed the lease what is slash was the most important thing to you when like creating your store so was it like the layout of the store was it like customer experience was it the items like was it you know visual merchandising kind of like what are the things that or at the top of your like concern list? Um, I wanted it to be really cool because I wanted people to want to enjoy being there and mm-hmm. like photograph it and post about it, but in yeah. like a way that's like not like I'm trying to have it be a cool space. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Of, you yeah. Know? It's not like, like photo op, like tag us, hashtag. <laughs> yeah. Like I feel like it's so transparent, especially yeah. now when people create spaces for Instagram instead of having a space that looks cool. So you then want to Instagram about it, you know? Yes. Yes. Very so true. I wanted it to just be really cool. And I wanted people to like love the vibes and just want to come and like feel like they can like stop in and hang out. I mean, it's not so big, so you can't just come and like sit around for like hours. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but just that they kind of felt like, and I wanted it to feel different than other stores and unique and not like a traditional, um, like all the shelves, like one after the other, like things are super like neat mm-hmm. and lined up. Like the way I stage a lot of the store is as if you could take a book, sh- the bookshelf and put it in your home because the way mm-hmm. it looks, like it's not like all the candles are right here and all the vases are right here and all the bowls right. are right here. It's like, yeah. it feels very curated and very well right. behind. I feel like that makes it so much easier for the customer to like envision something yes, in their exactly. home rather than being like, here is a candle. You have 30 options. Pick one. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> exactly. it's, much, like, it's much easier. Yeah. Um, so something I'm also learning about in school is how important like the experience that you provide for your customer um and that's like a huge value proposition for them that that's it's they're not only purchasing the item when they come into the store but they're also purchasing or looking for that experience yeah especially Um, especially for a smaller business like obviously target you know what you're getting but yeah but also target kind of is an experience walmart on the Um, other hand uh is yeah walmart (laughs) is not really the the experience you want to have um i've had some very unfortunate experiences at walmart oh, anyways um so what is kind of like the experience that you want your customers to have when coming in um and what like elements of that are most important to you i want them to feel very comfortable coming in and that they don't feel like they have to buy something because i, I feel that. like that's a really important it's like the long game you know in retail yes. I think. like a relationship like, with them instead yeah, of yeah like, like i hey, feel like i'm buy friends something. yeah like i feel like i'm friends with so many of my customers like they pop in all the time to say hi especially because there's always new things mm-hmm. so yeah. i try to be like oh like you should wait until you see something that you really love like don't feel yeah. pressured to buy something because when you come in next time, it's going to be a, probably, it looks like an entirely different store. Um, So I just want people to really feel like welcome and feel like they can just pop in and say hi and not feel pressured. I like, I, people come in all the time and they're like, Oh, like my friend, so-and-so told me to come by that, you know, and it's like, Mm -hmm. I, I just meet so many people. It's hard to remember everyone, but like they, felt enough of a connection to be like oh like I met the owner like you like you of course you'll remember my friend because you guys like talked for so long you know um which is of course it's 100% genuine that I do that yeah but like it's just definitely hard to keep track of everyone but people feel like that when they come in and that's so important to me and I just like always want to feel like we go I want the customer to feel like we go kind of like above and beyond like if Mm -hmm. someone's buying a disco ball and I have some extra like fishing line downstairs that I'll like go grab it for them or like yeah someone Mm -hmm. bought a jacket and I found like a random garment bag that I had for that was my own that I just wasn't really using that I like used for them or like Mm -hmm. we'll deliver things to your house that sort Mm -hmm. of thing that just feels like very personalized um and I feel like that's also the best way to get people to return because they have a personal connection with us absolutely and so they feel like oh I have have to get a gift I should go to abode to like look for something because like I like them there and I enjoy being there and stuff like Mm -hmm. that yeah it's new 
Absolutely. And I love what you said about the long game, because I feel like, especially with a store like yours, that's like you said, very curated, um, like this, you know, it's all new, always new things, but you know, if you like one thing in the store, you're probably going to like a lot of other things or the same thing for a friend. So without, you know, when you say like, you're not pressuring people to buy something, you're kind of inherently creating that customer, like that repeat customer, because they know like, I like it there. I like being in yeah, there and exactly. I know eventually I'm going to find something that I like. So I'm going to keep going back until I do because yeah, exactly, you always have cool exactly. new things coming Or like in. tell their friend too. Okay. <laughs> I have a random question that um, I would just like to interject in here. So I saw a TikTok on your TikTok of you shopping TikTok for the things, <laughs> yeah. shopping for things for the store. So I want to hear more about that process because when you're obviously shopping for vintage items, like or looking around for, I don't necessarily know if you would call it shopping. There's probably a, a more uh, professional word for it. But there you go. That's it. Fancy word. Um, yes. But kind of what, are you just like constantly looking for like state sales and things like what's, how much time do you spend on that? Kind of like, what's that like? I'm very interested in that. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I usually will t- like designate like once the store looks a little low and like our back stock, mm-hmm. I'll take a day to go out and go driving around to like Pennsylvania or New Jersey mm-hmm. and like rent a car and like I'll look for maybe I'll time it so I stop at a state sale in the morning and then go to some antique malls mm-hmm. um but I'm yeah I'm always like planning on doing that like my mom and grandma actually buy things for me at home Aww. in Boston and like <laughs> I'll so go cute. pick them up from them yeah like they'll go to estate sales or like local thrift stores and like take photos and send it to me and be like oh my god like do you like this stuff like That's, that you know they're up at the I estate sales that. being like my daughter owns a business and- oh yeah no the, 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 the women all know me who run all the stuff in our town like That's they'll like so put things sweet. aside for me now and stuff like that which is I so that. cute That's so um, sweet. and I'm always like scrolling like resale websites like at all hours of the day like I like mm-hmm. before I go to sleep I'll be like oh like <laughs> all of picks popped into my brain like let me like try and find those like stuff yeah. like that it takes up a lot of my time but that's my favorite part yeah so. I love it the whatever TikTok I saw you were at some big giant one I, I, I'm sure you know the TikTok I'm talking about everybody's like what are you talking literally what are you talking about um but that is so fun to me I love walking through antique malls and I would love having like a reason to buy a bunch of things well that's you what can't I can't buy that many to... things for yourself no exactly <laughs> this is my my favorite thing to say is I was able it's the best thing ever because when do you ever get to go shopping and buy every single thing you want <laughs> and like not feel bad about yeah, it You're I like, get to do that all the purpose. time <laughs> the yeah. right definitely. I love that it's like the best way for like a shopping addict to <laughs> literally monetize I, I, know, off I, was, of it. I was able to turn shopping into my job. Yeah, That's awesome. I love it. I love um, so, so, so we have the question written, like, how do you create repeat, repeat customers? But I feel like we already kind of talked about that, but I also wanted to, wanted to mention that I loved earlier when we were talking about kind of like the, um, how you don't want to pressure anyone. And I feel like that almost translates to your Instagram Um, And I think that that's a really important thing for just anybody that has a business in general, like no matter what you're doing, like I think that it's very obvious, obviously I've never been to the store, but I'm sure like as you were saying, like when you come in, it's not like, hey, here's like 50 things you can buy and you definitely need to buy something or we're going to like kick you out. Um, But it's very evident on Instagram as well that you're just trying to like engage. Yeah. Um, And I think that that's um, good. Good job. Um, (laughs) Not a pleasure. I'm just loving it. Instagram is definitely like like I, I don't want our Instagram to look like Crate and Barrel. You know what I mean? Yes, like exactly. I want it to be like so much more than that. Like I posted yeah. a um an Airbnb upstate that I thought was so beautiful and the style yeah. of, and someone and someone was asked me like why like why is that relevant? Like why would you post that on the abode it's like, cute. Instagram? <laughs> and I was like, well, it's just like social media is so much more than just like posting what we have for sale. It's like I want Absolutely. to create value right. and why people are following us absolutely um and like that's just like something that kind of goes along with like our vibe of like a beautifully curated home and then it's yeah. like a resource then for people um yeah. and I also want our Instagram to feel very casual because like I I don't influencers brands like I don't I follow barely any brands on Instagram and I follow 
and I don't like influencers that feeds look like they like have been planned out for like a month you know what I mean I like Mm -hmm. things that are pretty spontaneous and real and I feel like that is how our Instagram is like I had someone criticize me and be like oh like that like we got a new shipment and a product and we just like threw it on like some of our pedestals with the flowers and just did like a little impromptu photo shoot and he was like oh like that was so like disorganized and unplanned. Like you could have done like a whole photo shoot with that and it would look so much better. And I was like, but that's not the vibe. Like our vibe is like approachable and yeah. spontaneous. Yeah. And, like, I, like I want our Instagram to feel like a person is behind it. I was literally just, like, just going to say. Yeah, not yes. like a nameless brand just pushing right. product on you. And you also, right. you have stuff changing so much if you had elaborate photo shoots for every single item oh, that you brought I, in you would have no money you would literally exactly. have no money. literally exactly. right like, and I also feel like I feel like it kind of goes back to that um the trend of like I, I feel like I'm seeing it everywhere that everyone's kind of pushing more to the casual Instagram yes. um mm-hmm. aesthetic and that everyone's kind of like over those like super super produced photo shoots and like everything is perfect like yeah, we want to kind of have more like a realistic relatable experience and so I think that the way that you're able I was thinking the whole time before you said it like it just feels like there's a person behind your account it's not yeah. like a store pushing products yeah. it's just like a genuine person um I and that's that why we've had so much growth that. like I've had yeah. other friends who have brands who are like yeah it's so hard to get more followers or it's so hard to engage with their followers like they barely respond to us or like they barely get likes barely get comments and it's like it's just because like you need to just be like not so curated about it you just like yeah. have to keep it casual and that's how right. people are going to want to be interactive because they feel like it's a more much more approachable to them right yeah and I feel this like is- a, oh, go ahead. Thank go you. Ahead. <laughs> um, especially with like home decor, I feel like that can really feel really unattainable. Yeah. And yeah, give off like a very like, oh, like I don't want to go, like I'm not that trendy. I don't want to go in there. Like I, right. you know, I don't I, I'm too I don't, whatever. Like, yeah. Right. You're like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I feel like that's like you said, you're just putting stuff on the, you know, on the shelves and making it look, it look cool and and then t- snapping a picture of it. Anybody can come in and buy a couple things and you know make that happen themselves yeah that's something my boyfriend always jokes about with me is like he's like things are cool because you buy them and put them on the shelf like yeah you could see Mm -hmm. something somewhere random and be like what the hell is that but then when you the way you have it presented to people in the store it makes it cool it makes people want exactly that's like I feel like that's something with the whole vintage trend that I've noticed is things that I that's why we need people like you who are curating things into a store. Because if I went to an antique mall, I might be like, uh, oh. yeah, yeah, I might be like, I don't know about that. But then if I saw it on your Instagram, I'd be like, okay, I see how I could make that. Yes, cool. Definitely. And like, definitely like offers, like you said, value, which is. And like when you game. buy products, like they always have a cost to them. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like just because something's not like being produced by like overseas and shipped here you know what I mean it's still like like I, I don't know like I feel like there's kind of like some sort of a little bit of like a stigma about yeah. like maybe like thrifting or things like that or like buying and reselling but it's like everything has a cost associated with it so like yes, exactly. the cost of this is like me picking it out from like an antique mall versus like me coming up with it and producing it and paying for someone to make it in China, in China. you know what I mean yeah and, and also like, it kind of adds like a story behind it like you can yeah. walk in and be like I know that this like was thoughtfully curated like for not me specifically but like you know the consumer the general me rather yeah. yeah the general me whereas with if you walk into Target you know that you know some board of men were like hmm looks like trends are leaning towards <laughs> this so we're going to do this yeah. with whatever and exactly. like you know yeah. yeah. And if you're, if you're concerned about like sustainability, I think that that's an awesome way to shop too, because not everybody has time to drive around to one day a yeah. week to all these estate sales and antique malls. So it's just like mm-hmm. the, or have moms in Boston doing it for me. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But it's, you know, it's, oh, my dog's oh. hacking up her water on the floor. <laughs> Thank you so much for the interjection. Appreciate it. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely think um, I've heard a couple people or a couple chatters about all that but I think Mm -hmm. it's definitely um like you said everything you have to you have to do it in the right way but I think that you 
you are doing it the right, right Absolutely. way. Earlier, I was going to re relate the inst your Instagram to um, Duolingo, but it's not <laughs> like that at all. I just was thinking like relatable and that they're not like pushing a product. They literally don't talk about their product at all. Yeah. Um, but then I realized that that was not related like at all, but yeah. Love it. Okay, so to wrap up the questions, um, our final question is what advice would you give to an entrepreneur who is thinking about opening up a brick and mortar? Like what would be your, if you could only tell them one thing, what would be your top piece of advice? Pick something that doesn't exist already to do. Mm. Yeah. Like it has to be unique. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, and it has to be unique and it has to be something I haven't paid really for any advertising at all mm -hmm. since mm -hmm. I opened and like that's because people post and want to post about it and they want yep. to like tell their friends about it. So I've been, mm -hmm. so I guess it would be two pieces of advice. It'd be, you have to do something unique because, or else why would people come start coming yeah. to your place? Right. If it's just yeah. the same as everywhere else. And it has to be done in a way that makes people want to post about it and tell their friends about it because they think it's cool. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, yeah. And I think unique. I feel like that's so mean... like literal, but it's like, there's, if I have like a tick, if people didn't want to make TikToks of my store, then I would have yeah. no customers because every single person yeah. comes in and is like, I saw you on TikTok, yeah. or I saw you on Instagram. Yeah. It's like, they're not mm -hmm. seeing my TikToks because I think I have literally three TikToks that have ever gotten any views. Mm -hmm. They're seeing TikToks that other people have made of for us that they mm -hmm. posted on their own volition. So I feel like having mm -hmm. some sort of thing that other people want to engage and post about is like the key also. That's actually such a good point that I never thought about that like businesses, if you make your product like unique and valuable and like, um, something that's desirable that people will make content for you without you having to pay them. Yeah. yeah that's like, a huge that's... thing in social media, like user generated content. Um, yeah. and utilizing our Instagram that, is basically UGC. I was about other to than say, our yeah. Like that makes your life a thousand times easier too, because then you don't have to be creating all this content which is just amazing. But yeah, UGC is definitely a big thing. Um, okay. Well, on to random questions. These ones are fun. So the first one is what spring trend are you most excited for? Which I was saying before, I don't know shit about shit about trends, but, uh, Abby, you want to start? You seem like you might know yeah. the best. <laughs> <laughs> she definitely I've seen, knows the I've best. seen like, I've seen two trends coming out. I've seen neon everywhere like mm -hmm. I watched Zara the other day and I was like oh is neon back I was like I feel like I, I literally just threw away all my neon sweaters like three weeks ago <laughs> <laughs> from that I've been hoarding for the last like two and a half years while yep. neon was on its way out mm -hmm. so I think that would be fun like I always love like a bright colorful moment um mm -hmm. and I've also in terms of home decor have been seeing this like futuristic like space age trend that was really mm -hmm. big in like the 60s mm -hmm. um kind of coming back and being a little bit like less like maybe like I said like mid the mid-century modern thing is like mm -hmm. everywhere it, it, and so oh, I feel yeah. like this is like kind of has much more personality and much more kind of like funkiness to it so I'm excited for those two trends to hopefully be brought more to the forefront mm -hmm. I love that um love me like not knowing if things are trends, but just knowing what I see in the stores. Um, <laughs> I, I've been loving sort of like you're saying with neon, I went into Zara too. And there was just, it was like different neons on every sort of area, but I like the kind of like colorful, but it's like pastel neon. Like it's still neon ish, but it's like mm -hmm. kind of a muted version because neon makes me look crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do really like the color and I've never been somebody who wears a lot of color. Um, but I love that. And I also just love that in like my home too. Um, mm -hmm. I, everybody listening knows, um, well, maybe not everybody listening knows, but I <laughs> just recently moved like into a department of my own. So I'm able to like decorate it myself, which has just oh, been so like, fun. so, so fun. Um, so I've been loving that. And also just like a random trend that I like is the candles that are in the shape of things like yep. that, you, mm -hmm. you know, you're not supposed to burn them, but like you know, they're just like home decor, but I recently got a little like Cupid one when I was in Nashville Aww. and it's cute. I just think that's fun. I don't know if that's a trend, but Alexis, what do you think? It's cute though. Um, I would say I, well, there's one, it's not really a trick. Yeah. Of that, course. Alexa. That was, that was Alexa. Um, <laughs> of course, but, um, this isn't really a trend, but literally yesterday on Pinterest, I saw 
so simple but it's like a I saw a picture of like a floral dress and then the girl had like a white baseball hat on and then like a long like not a flannel but like a button-up shirt and I thought that that was like literally in the spring those are like three things I wear but I literally never put them together and I think that it's not a trend but I just yeah no the that. baseball hats though like baseball yeah. hats I feel like are for sure yeah. a trend. but then I would say like I mean 90s is not like an upcoming trend that's always a trend but I feel like I've been seeing a lot of like crop tops of like 90s Mm-hmm. childhood like child tv shows it's like the y- y2k trend that's yeah been here for a little but it's bit. like yeah but like in like the spring like a, colors yeah. like the more like bright like i don't know i've been seeing a lot of like hello kitty or spa like i don't i don't even know but i feel like that's really cute and i want to i want to go for that so yeah i love that um okay so last and final question random question this one <laughs> is what home decor style do you just like can't like what can, can you not stand or you think it's like chicky like you just really are not not a fan we're about to like piss some people off for real <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> sorry y'all <laughs> abby you can start um something that i am not a huge fan of are neon signs i'm just like over it um i yeah i think that they have they not every single one ever you know like there's still Mm -hmm. some cool ones but like i'm just like not not it anymore i feel like they had their me for me neon signs and weddings Mm. is like my big like i know that's not interior design but like if i see another wedding sign on tiktok or on Etsy or Pinterest that's neon I'm gonna throw up yeah like, <laughs> like, it, it's like not it, a bad it was idea so good and now like, it's just like it yeah. came and it's it's like it got it was it got ruined you know what I mean yeah like, it was yeah too, too much yeah yeah totally. I really I agree that there are some cool ones like actual real old neon signs like yeah oh yeah different. like a mar- like a vintage martini from like mm. a bar mm-hmm. that like was in like mm-hmm. that the shutting down so sick but like yeah mm-hmm. like new york city or like they've gotten to like mass producer like shit quality, yeah you know yeah. or like the like little quote ones i'm just like nah, i feel like, like in like a it. store if they had like if they were like a vintage store and they had like a vintage neon sign that was like related to their business i feel like that is the case that it's like cool yeah but when it's like you buy it on Amazon for like $30. It's like, yeah, you're not yeah. going to get like a for like one. prettiest girl, like pretty girls are the hat. Like, you know what I mean? Like pretty girl. Yeah. girl. <laughs> pretty <No>. girl. <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah. Okay. I think, and this is like, it's not really, well, yeah, it's just, I didn't say home decor trend. I said home decor style. I do not like when everything is white, when mm-hmm. everything is white like Mm -hmm. add some spice, add some color. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even have to be, it can all be still neutral, but like all Mm -hmm. those like plain white kitchens, Mm -hmm. I'm like, your kitchen is going to always look dirty other than the (laughs) one time you took this picture right when you like got this. Also you edited that photo guaranteed. Exactly. It's not actually that white. Exactly. But I just like, I really am just a collector of things. I like just having a bunch of crap, like not crap, but I like having just a bunch of things, like a lot of stuff. Same. Big I'm not stuff, girl. definitely not a minimalist, but no, yeah, I, I'm I don't the opposite like, of a minimalist. Same. I'm literally <laughs> maximalist, but I do not like the just the all white. I think that's boring. So Alexis. Definitely. Um, this is in no way a trend. This is like an old thing, but it genuinely shakes me to my core. Um, I think it would be best categorized as Olive Garden chic. <laughs> like, you no, know, I'm like, not- yeah, you like know Italian vibes. <laughs> yeah, the suburb vibes. Like I, yeah. my best friend growing up, her house still is Olive Garden chic, and she's like her childhood she's like, home. She's like, no, it's her mom. She would agree with it. Her mom <laughs> would agree with it. Um, but it genuinely just like kind of hurts me. Our house like, used to be what? like that. Our walls were dark in some green, in some rooms they were dark green, some rooms they were dark red yeah the like, little red wall thing uh it, yeah, so it just like hurts me to yeah. like yeah it's just too much Agree. Oh, okay. chic. Uh, yeah. hometown okay. italian restaurant love it um, <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> okay abby thank you so much for coming on and 
dropping all of your knowledge for us and our listeners. Yeah, really thanks it. for having me. Um, why don't you go ahead and plug yourself, tell everybody where they can find you, where they can find Abode, all that good stuff. Yeah, so um, Abode is at Shop Abode, A B B O D E on Instagram, on TikTok, um, our website, shopabode.com. We ship. So if you ever see things on our website or our Instagram, you can just let us know and we can ship them to you. Um, but what we have in store is different. So if you're ever in New York or you live in New York, you should definitely come in person because we have completely different vintage items online versus in store. And then my personal Instagram is at Abby E. Price. Um, so yeah, definitely check it out. Amazing. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Yes, we are had so much fun thank you so one of my this is one of my goals for 2022 is to be on a podcast I was on oh my I know so I'm really excited I was someone else uh interviewed me and then they just like never like they kind of just stopped doing the podcast and they never like put it out there so I like thought I accomplished that one but now this well, we will definitely be uploading this will definitely be uploaded um we're hope so we're honored to be a part of your 2022 I almost said we, 2020 we, we, we just ghost you. <laughs> we're, like, we're like, sorry. We, like, <laughs> we delete our whole podcast. <laughs> oh my God. Love it. Okay. Well, thank you guys for listening. Be sure to leave us a rating and review on wherever you listen to your podcasts and oh my gosh, subscribe to keep up with our weekly episodes. And then follow us on TikTok at Check Your Aesthetic and over on Instagram at Check Your Aesthetic Podcast. And our personal accounts, Katie Creative Co., Alexis Adams Aldrich, and at Shop Abode. And we will talk to you next week. Bye, guys. Bye.